Hi, Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today I'd like to talk about uh, using JavaScript in Adobe Lifecycle. And basically, we just, just want to introduce to you the script editor. So we have Life, Lifecycle open here, and we have our uh, standard form open. And for example, I'm going to just to demonstrate the abilities of Lifecycle and JavaScript in Lifecycle. I'm going to drag a text field over from the object library and put it on my form. And when we do that, um, this field, of course, becomes part of our hierarchy down here as a text field one. And I've shown in other videos very briefly how to edit JavaScript in this, but I want to go into a little bit more detail here uh, to give you an overview of, of what and why we do that. So if you go up to your menu and click on Window and then Script Editor, something like the following should pop up. And uh, depending on how you have Lifecycle layout set up, um, it may come up as a extra top menu bar, or it may come up as just a separate window like 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 this has here, and or it may come up on your on your side palette like like that but however it comes up you have the freedom to move it around wherever you want and I find it's very convenient if you have dual monitors to drag this window especially with writing longer scripts more than just a few lines uh, dragging this window to a second monitor uh, because right now it's covering up my objects and if I want to select a certain object to edit the script of I've got to move it out of the way before I can select the text field and then address the scripts underneath that text field. So for this example, since I'm only demonstrating this on one screen, I'm going to put it in the top bar here like it, it was originally. And I'm just going to use this little toggle button here to open and close it. Now again, uh, in order to access the script manager, you have to have it turned on here with this checkbox. But also, you have to have the object selected that you want to edit the script of. If you don't, it's going to assume the main form is the object you're going to be editing the script of. So in the example we're going to give here, we're going to select the text field and we have the blue handles appearing around the edges. And then as we go up here to the script editor, we have this show events with script drop down. And what this is is it's saying here is all and this drop down here is all the events associated with that particular object. And there are some events that all objects share like these top five, uh, six here. And then there's some that uh, are common to most, but not all. Like some are grayed out here, like pre-open and pre-sign. And then uh, there are some that are form-oriented, meaning it happens to all objects at the same time whenever the layout is ready. In other words, whenever the form opens in, in Adobe and all objects, the entire layout is ready, then this object has a, you could put a particular script behind that. Uh, we'll explain that in a minute, though. So for simple uh, example purposes, I'm just going to choose the click event of the text field. And when I do this, you start seeing in this header here a hierarchy definition or a, a path to an object. So we have the form and we have a subform, which is unnamed. And we change the name of the subform right here in our hierarchy to main. And then go back to our script editor now, we see that it's form main text field one and then colon colon the click event and then in parentheses here it's indicating that we're using JavaScript and this is being run at the client and the way to change those options are here you have form calc and JavaScript as your two choices and then you have three choices either run the run the script at client server or both client and server uh, I normally in my all, all my forms are are using the client because I'm not using the enterprise level version of Adobe Lifecycle. I'm just using the designer to to create PDF forms that run individually on people's computers. But those three choices have to do with that. And so now we're in, we're in this click event, and we can start writing code. And so uh, just for example, I'm gonna. I'm going to write a very simple code, this dot rel value set equal to 111. And I'm going to put a colon at the end of that just to keep with good 
JavaScript syntax. That's not really required. And of course, after I'm done writing my code, um, there is a script syntax checker, which can find some simple syntax errors that would cause your form not to work correctly. And so if I click on that, if I had something incorrect in my syntax, there'd be a red bar, a red highlight on the line where it found the syntax error, and which would help me to find and fix any JavaScript errors I had. And so now we can hide this, we can preview the form, and when we click on our text field, the value comes in. So now I don't want to go into a big long litany about uh, JavaScript because you can go to other websites and learn about that in other tutorials and other videos. But one thing I have learned over the years using JavaScript is that my hierarchy and my naming really does make a difference when I'm programming in JavaScript. And so I want to follow a standardized way of naming. And so what I always do first thing when I open a new form is I title the topmost subform uh, of the hierarchy, I just title it form, and then if I only have one page, I would call it main. If I had two pages, I would name page one, page one, and page two, page two. And then I try to follow a standardized way of naming objects. And so text boxes get the lowercase txt, and then uh, a descriptive word. So here, txt, clicker, some such thing like that. And then command buttons or let's try checkbox. If I had a checkbox on the form, I would use the CB lowercase and then some descriptive word to indicate what that checkbox is doing. And this just comes from years of using Visual Studio and, and Visual Basic and other things. Um, that just this helps when our, our naming. Because when we come in here to these events then in our script editor, we're looking at creating longer JavaScripts that reference a lot of different objects. It really helps to know what our naming convention is so we can quickly type things out. Of course, if you notice there what I was typing, Adobe Lifecycle uh, has a way in which to quickly find objects in the hierarchy. It has an auto-recognize feature, so if I begin to type out an object by typing the first in the hierarchy, which is here, form, and then hitting the, the period, it, it gives me a, a list of options underneath that part of the hierarchy. And so I can quickly, by typing the first letter of the page I want to go to, main, got to start over, main, it'll quickly find that. I can just hit the tab button and it'll fill that in. And then I want to find maybe the, the uh, TXT clicker. All I have to type is TXT and then it, it, it finds it in this list of elements in alphabetical order and I can quickly just hit the tab button to go ahead and fill that in so I don't have to type out the entire object. And that's just a quick way to access different objects in your hierarchy. Most of the things I do with Lifecycle involves the raw value of an object where as something happens, the user does something, clicks somewhere, chooses something, and then it changes the raw value of something else. That's the most commonly accessed uh, attribute property of an object that I use, but also uh, with drop down selected index, and also sometimes we mess with captions and other such things. But for the most part, raw value is the one you have to know and use the most. And so if we want to hide our script editor, we can just go to the window and click that, or if, if we wanted to use the, uh, the little up arrow here, we could do that and that disappears so we can go back to designing our form. Just to uh, show you what happens when you actually put a JavaScript in a PDF form, if you look in the XML source you can see here under the field definition in XML there is a script tag and inside that script tag contains the script I wrote and if I had written a hundred lines of script it all be contained right here inside this open and closing script tag just a way to view that. That's how, that's how it's stored in the form. Another thing to note is when using your script editor right out of the box, you may not see the line numbers on the left, and of course with only one line of code, uh, 
the line numbers aren't a big deal, but when you get to the point where you're writing longer JavaScripts, you want to see those line numbers, and so you want to have this show line numbers selected. I'm just right clicking in the white space here, and I'm showing line numbers. So I want to show you how to turn on the JavaScript debugger so that when you run a form, you can use the de debugging capabilities of Lifecycle and Acrobat Pro. So I'm going to go and I'm going to open Adobe Acrobat Pro, and under the Edit Preferences, I'm going to go to JavaScript, and I, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the JavaScript debugger is uh, enabled after Acrobat is restarted, and then I want to also say Show Console on Errors and Messages. And then when an exception is thrown, this is of course user preference, but I choose to ignore because I don't want it to break uh, the form. I want it to keep going in case there's other errors or other problems. I want to see how that works. But you could choose to break, or you could choose to ignore a trace. Anyway, when you do this, and then you exit Pro, and then restart it, and then exit again, and then preview your form, if you have an error in your script, we're going to forget to put in the equal sign in the click event. We'll preview the form, and then when we click, it finds the error in line one before the statement. And so that automatically popped up and showed me that when the error was thrown. Now, of course, I can choose in this debugger window to discard that error by hitting the trash can, and I can click off of that JavaScript pop-up, or if I want to bring it back, I can hit Control J, and that brings it back. But since I have that uh, enabled to show when an exception is thrown, it'll automatically come up when I click the uh, click the text field and the error is thrown again. So that's a quick introduction to JavaScript and the script editor in Adobe Lifecycle. Thanks to all those who have been subscribing, and thanks to all those who have left comments. Uh, please continue to do so. Check out the blog at truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com. And remember that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.